Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for thank you for connecting to the class. I've just started the recording. I'm sure others will uh, uh, join us in a bit. We ran over the previous class a few minutes, so there'll be a little delayed, I think, in joining. But um, let's pray, and we'll get started. Okay. Could uh, somebody just pray with us together, and then we will start, please. Okay, so this Go you. ahead. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for uh, you giving us one more opportunity to learn from your word, Lord. Help us, and I pray that this session be in your hand, Lord, and help us uh, Holy Spirit lead us, each of student and also Pastor Lord. Whatever we learn from uh, from the uh, this session, Lord, help us to grow in you, Lord, that we ways of to work for your kingdom and your name be glorified. Thank you. I submit all things to you in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right. Welcome everyone to this class on church and uh, ministry administration. Uh, we uh, didn't have a class last Friday. So last week we had only one class uh, that we did on uh, communications. Today we are going to move into another topic. Uh, we're going to talk about culture and we will probably spend uh, uh, additional one more lecture on this on culture and if 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 needed we could do a, a third lecture but i think we we will see we'll see if we can finish it in two um now uh, i've put out the notes for you uh, on, on for today's lecture i will also go ahead and share the pdf so we can follow um so culture when we talk about culture of uh, right uh, the what we are talking about first and foremost is the culture of the organization so in this course we're talking about the church the organization side of the church or the christian ministry so uh, whatever we are learning can apply to a local church uh, the local church as an organization or it can apply to any kind of Christian ministry as an organization, right? So now, uh, the culture uh, of the organization is very important, and, um, and, and, and we will talk about what it is. But let's just try to describe, you know, uh, define, you know, what are we talking about when we say culture uh, in the context of the organization? We're talking about uh, essentially uh, shared values, practices, uh, standards, traditions. It means this is something that everybody in the organization uh, kind of uh, express. Right? So that, that there's a shared way of thinking. So if you want to look at it, you know, and, and it's, when you look at it from different perspectives, uh, the culture of an organization, it can, it is, uh, can be described by the jointly held beliefs within the organization it can also be expressed through the common values and practices. Uh, when we say rituals, I'm not talking about religious rituals. I'm just talking about things that we do over and over again, you know, practices uh, of people in the organization. It could also be described by the way of think, behaving and thinking, you know, what, what is the norm, you know, of how you should behave in the organization. Uh, it can also be different described by the way things are done. This is the way we do it here in this organization, you know. So these jointly held beliefs, practices, values, norms of behavior or patterns of behavior and the way things are done, you know, all of that uh, uh, describe the culture uh, within an organization. One minute, let me just see if somebody's trying to come in and if I've Okay, so that is coming in. Okay. Um, okay. 
All right, so let me go back to the PDF. All right, so uh, that's, you know, so that in general, really speaking, and, you know, the, this is what describes the culture. Now, in a large organization, uh, you know, uh, there could be subcultures within the organization. Meaning uh, we can't assume that everybody in the organization or every department uh, uh, have the same culture, especially in very large organizations. There can be subcultures. That means a certain division or a certain department can have its own culture, which could be different from, uh, you know, the organizational, uh, the rest of the organization. You know, that means over oh, there they do it like this kind of thing. You know, that's possible also. So we need to keep in mind. Uh, depending on the size of the organization so on there could be subcultures the other thing also we keep in mind is culture is dynamic and it could change over time you know uh, it could change over time uh, with, due to external or internal changes for example if the leadership inside changes right the leadership could then affect the change in culture so i'm just giving a broad, broad example maybe there was one leader it was very dominating, very uh, very suppressive, very dictatorial. So the organization as a whole had a you know had a very you know we will call this a very toxic culture. It was an unhealthy culture because the leader was like that, and everybody was uh, you know kept in fear and uh, couldn't talk, and they just had to do. And let's say you got rid of that leader and you brought in a leader who was totally opposite. You know he was a, a leader who would. Uh, is gentle, is a servant leader, is, is, is encouraging people. What happens? The culture in the organization will change, you know, and uh, it's resulted from an internal change. You change the leader and the culture changed, you know. Uh, so things like that. So culture is dynamic. It can change. It can change over time. It can change due to internal changes or it can also bring about in external, you know, so things from outside change and therefore the organization decides look we are going to change example you know let's say a church uh, said okay you know we're all going to wear suit and tie you know we're going to be very formal so you know uh, monday to friday every everyone comes in suit and tie to work in the office sunday everybody's in like the best suit and tie and everything uh, i'm just giving an example right so they're, they're like that, but then they find out that, you know, the world around them, the people they're trying to reach are, are changing. They're going away from suits and ties to more casual kinds of, um, you know, attire. And they are, those are the kind of people who want to come to church. People want to come to church, but uh, they don't want to come in suit and tie. They want to come in just simple clothes, you know, everyday casual clothes. Yeah. Then, so what happens? And they say, okay, hey, uh, because there's external change happening, let us change. So they, you know, they shed their suit and tie uh, thing and uh, just, just, you know, change uh, everything. So they make it more, the organization becomes more flat, more open. Uh, people are wearing more casual. And then same thing happens in the Sunday services, etc. and so on. So uh, there were external changes that then resulted in a change within the culture of uh, both the organization and the congregation. It's just this just example, right? But the point is, when we're talking about culture, we're talking about the values, the practices, the, the way people work together and the way things are done, what they believe and so on. And uh, it, in our lesson, and the lessons that we are doing on culture, our uh, primary interest is in the workplace culture, that means uh, of the organization or the church. But what will we say, we uh, at times will also refer to it, uh, extend it to the church culture, meaning, you know, if, if, the, if the organization culture is like this, usually it will extend to the congregation as well, right? So while our focus, most of talk will be about uh, the workplace, I mean, as, as an, the organization, but keep in mind, a lot of this will spill over to the congregation, will impact the congregation, the people being served, all right? So we'll keep that in mind. Now, why is culture important? Important and uh, uh, I've just put down four important, and these are very important. First of all, it, it affects the employee or the staff experience. The people, uh, the people are working in the organization. Uh, the culture of the organization greatly in, in, uh, determines their experience in the organization. Right? 
even though you know we can do do all this we can you know we can give them a role description we can give them okay this is your job description you give them you know a, a, a nice workplace you give them the equipment you give them all these things ultimately the culture of the organization somehow will override and influence their overall experience so if the culture is bad and toxic and harsh no matter what other things we give them you know we can give them best equipment we can give them lots of money to spend we can give them whatever but if the culture is not good their experience in the organization will not be good okay and connected to that it affects the productivity or the outcome you know what what are people able to produce by being part of the organization right and looking externally it will affect how people are served that means in our context it's the congregation because ultimately the church as an organization all the church staff the people working are then going to serve the congregation so it will impact them the congregation will be affected uh, uh, because of the culture eventually right culture is also important because it can protect the organization from negative influences whether it's internal or external so the culture is like an immune system for the organization if you have a strong uh, culture a good culture uh, when there's some negative influence that comes from within you know it, it's going to be eliminated or if it's if it's an external thing that comes from outside it's the organization is going to reject it why because they want to protect the people want to protect this healthy culture that they have example let's say you know we have a uh, no, as a church organization, we have a very, and we will talk about some of these things. And we have a very good, uh, you know, a, a, a culture that that uh, uh, that really is one of teamwork. That people work as teams. Uh, you know, it's not about an individual performance kind of thing, but it's a culture where teamwork is encouraged. It's a V culture. You know, uh, we. This is our work. We are doing this together. This is our success together. And suppose somebody comes in who's very individualistic, you know, for whatever reason, you know, suppose that kind of a person gets hired to join the organization. There's only one thing that's going to happen. Either that person changes and becomes a V person and says, uh, you know, he adapts to the culture of the organization or he will not survive. Because the rest of the organization will not accept somebody who is an i person you know who's very individualistic because the culture in the organization is v this is our team we are going to do this together we enjoy and share the success so what happens it's an automatic immune system it's going to prevent negative influence whether it comes you know whether it's through i'm just using an example of a person a person who comes in as a you know so it affects uh, or maybe if there's a negative influence from outside, the, the organization, so culture is very important. It protects the organization. When the culture is really strong and it's imbibed by the people and they value it, they will protect it and so on. Now, uh, so as we talk about culture, you know, some of the things we want to understand is you know, what shapes the organization culture? How do you uh, nurture culture within an organization and today we'll also look at you know contrasting cultures you know, what is a what is a healthy culture a kingdom culture which we should you know foster within the organization what are some toxic cultures or oh, examples of a toxic culture meaning unhealthy culture which is very detrimental to the organization we'll just do a contrast today okay. so uh, what shapes the culture within the organization right there are you know we can quickly identify uh, some of these things these are all of this is you know common knowledge when you when you, when you study organization and study uh, this is a whole field and management on organizational culture so all of this is general information um, very important is leadership all right the leadership that is uh, the meaning people who are in leadership they need to what do they model people will tend to follow their leaders right and so that's one very important thing what do the leaders model if leaders model a servant leadership if they if the leaders model 
you know, uh, something that's showing care and something that's, uh, you know, uh, you know, that's healthy, people will also do that. So all, at all levels. So if the team leader is like this, then the next person below will follow that, you know. So that this is very important. You know, this, we, we can't overstate how important uh, the leadership and what they model the behavior of the leadership, how that influences culture, it cannot be overstated. It's very important. And you could say that, you know, everything starts flowing from here. Uh, if the leader is toxic, well, you're going to have a culture that's toxic. Right? Secondly, uh, the sharing of stories. That means when we talk about, hey, this is how the organization started. This is what God is, you know, I'm talking about the church culture. This is what God has done. This is what God has helped us do. And uh, this is how we have grown. This is how we have journeyed through various situations. This is how we have overcome. So when we talk about the stories, like, you know, what we would say, share those testimonies. And when these stories are told and retold, these stories then inspire shape and guide behavior, which means they actually help nurture the culture within the organization because people begin to think in line with those stories hey god has helped us before we did this project and we we blessed so many people okay we will do it again or oh, we can do something bigger you know so those stories of uh, successes the stories of uh, what the organization has done and uh, you know in the past when those are told and retold and how we have grown or how we have moved from various locations or how we've handled challenges those stories uh, help shape and guide Another thing uh, would be the practices. So what do we do repeatedly and consistently? You know, so let's say, you know, uh, somebody does a good job, you say, thank you. Well, then that's going to be repeated throughout the organization. It's, it's going to keep happening over and over again. And if you keep doing that, saying thank you, uh, people, are, you know, uh, repeat that. People will say thank you. It's, it becomes a ritual. It becomes a practice that when something happens, you say thank you. You know, uh, it's a small thing, but it's a good and healthy thing for the culture. Right? Um, or, you know, you celebrate uh, a team's accomplishment and you celebrate it as a team. Then that's a ritual. That means uh, maybe one or two people did great work, but you celebrate the team. So that becomes a ritual and a practice. So then from then on, you know, you celebrate the team. You say, hey, the team did a great job. They did a great job. You know, even if you know there have been one or two outstanding contributors, you celebrate the team. So that is a ritual, it's a practice, and it's repeated consistently. People continue to do that. It shapes thinking and behavior. Right? Uh, another important piece that shapes culture, of course, is uh, during the orientation or training or repeated communication, uh, you share what are core values. And this is something you'll find in many organizations. They say, these are core values. But these are what we value as important for us. So uh, yeah, this can be done and during the orientation when people are joining or in training or repeatedly you're communicating it. That also helps shape the culture. And also when you affirm and reward behavior aligned to the culture, right? So uh, the incentives, so to speak, uh, are, are, are are, are, are affirming, hey, you did like this. You know, uh, performance may be one of the things, but sometimes it may not just be performance. It may be going out of the way to do something, or maybe you know, sacrificing in order to accomplish something. So when you affirm and reward those kinds of behaviors, then those become part of the culture because people say, hey, that's what is recognized. That's what is rewarded. I'm going to do that. I'm going to follow that. Right? So that's another way to establish culture within the organization. So let me just share with you a little bit of what we've done here at APC. Uh, so many years ago, uh, I don't know exactly when, but uh, we had our, our media our graphics team uh, put this little picture together and we've, you know, we've used it in different places. It's on our website. It's on our uh, volunteer guidelines document and mem church membership documents. So we've kind of put it in different places. Uh, uh, and in, in, in this one picture, uh, we are trying to create a uh, capture, sorry, of our core values. I mean, this is what is important for us. Okay. But remember, it's one thing to have a picture, but what's more important than the picture is 
for leaders to embody this, for leaders to model this, to, for leaders to go after this. So even if people don't see this picture, they have to see this embodied in the leaders, right? Uh, it's good if they see the picture and it's good if they keep seeing it often. So, you know, we try to put it in different places, but uh, leaving it in a, in a in a graphic like this will not get the job done. Okay, it'll just be a graphic. It'll just be, okay, it's a namesake thing. What's more powerful, what's more important is people, leaders, uh, starting with the leaders and others who are in the organization should embody these things which we call as core values, right? So what do we say? We say our theme is Jesus. That means this church is about Jesus. It's not about the pastor. It's not about a few pastors. It's not about some celebrity person. Our theme is Jesus. Right? Our content is the word. That means what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to preach and teach the word of God. So we're not here to teach some philosophy. We're not here to excite the crowd. We're not here to entertain the crowd. We are going to focus on the word. What's our method? Holy Spirit power. So while we may use tools, we may use technologies, ultimately we're depending on the power of the Holy Spirit to impact lives. We're not depending on our LED screen. We're not depending on uh, you know fancy videos. We're not depending on fancy graphics. So no, of course we'll have the best we can, but more important is our method is Holy Spirit power. Right? What is our passion? Our passion. Ultimately, it's people. So it's not about buildings. It's not about other things that people may consider important. What's most important? People. So we are here to serve people. We are here to help them. So people are priority. And ultimately, what are we working towards? We are working towards helping people become like Christ, our goal. Right? So this is our core. Uh, these are most important. Now, we have to embody this. And, uh, you know, uh, uh, hopefully, you know, I, I know, this is something that has to come from people rather than me trying to speak on it, but hopefully as leaders, and I'm saying leaders means our pastoral team and, and all the ministry leaders and people are heading up various in areas of ministry in the church, our church stuff. Hopefully we are doing a good job or a reasonably good job in modeling this so that when people think about us, they say like, yeah, yeah, it's not about some individuals. They're, they're pointing to Jesus. They're focused on the word of God. They are depending on the Holy Spirit. They really care for people. And their goal is, yeah, they are working towards Christ likeness. You know, hopefully people are able to see this and hopefully we can become better at it. Because if, if we don't model it, then having this graphic, like I said, is of no use. And then around this core, there are these additional values. So let's say opportunity. That means we want to give opportunity to anybody. Uh, so anyone can come to the church and serve. Now, uh, of course, in certain areas, there are requirements. But as long as you meet the requirements, the opportunity is there. So we do not, uh, in any way, uh, so any believer can come to the church. I, I use a qualified believer because we are a church, so therefore we need believers. These opportunities for all believers. They can come and be a part of the ministry. That's what's happening here. Unity is very important. If there's anything that threatens you know, the unity, then that's a big issue. So I've made some huge decisions based on the simple thing that the action of that individual was disturbing the unity of the church. So then therefore, you know, it was a very strong action taken because this is a very core value and, and we cannot let anything threaten the unity of uh, the body. Integrity is also very high. We need to maintain integrity. And if anything disturbs this, people will be held responsible. We want to pursue excellence. It's a core value. Uh, we don't settle for mediocrity. Uh, we push for excellence. And if people are not willing to go that extra mile for excellence, okay, at some point, you know, we have to take a call. But excellence is something we all will have to pursue. We also have a value of pioneering. That means we want to be out doing something new. You know, we're not afraid to step out and, and, and try out some new things. It doesn't matter. We are going to be the first people to try it out. Let's do it. 
and relationships are important. You know, we value our relationships with people that must be protected. So here again, if there's anything that is disturbing in relationships, we take that very seriously. So these are our core values and, and, and the decisions people make and the choices, you know, as leaders make, uh, they're kind of, you know, this is like behind, this is like the guiding print, uh, if you say the uh, guiding principle or principles in all the decisions they make. You know, and, and, and the, you know, this really touches on everything, everyone does, right? So core value. So uh, this is one way of trying to, you know, um, encourage uh, or foster culture within organization by actually communicating core values, uh, letting people know that this is there, and then we have to embody it by in real life. We have to live this out in real life. And then I've, I've just explained it here and uh, so on. Okay. So having understood that, I want to spend a little bit of time here talking about contrasting culture. So you will understand, you know, why culture is so important and uh, why this can actually either build the organization or tear it down. Right, so I've put this table and I just you know contrast. So let's look at it among leaders, and then there's some uh, thing about uh, among staff. So really, uh, these are actually attitudes that in people carry, and uh, if these attitudes are embodied by leaders, it's going to, um, on the right side. It's going to result in a very toxic or unhealthy culture. Is, which is going to hurt a lot of people and it is not good for the organization. But in contrast to that, you know, uh, here, th these are healthy attitudes. Uh, and we're talking about leaders. Leaders means they could be the pastors, they could be the heads of various departments, they could be, you know, lead leaders of different ministry areas and so on, right? So look at the contrast. Suppose there is a, a leader who's di very dictatorial, just do what I say. Oh, people, you know, it's like, okay, whatever I say, you have to do. There is no option to discuss. There's no option to talk. There's no option to share ideas and opinions. That's a very dictatorial type of leader. And uh, you can imagine, you know, if, if, if that is happening at all levels, because what the leader does, you know, at all levels, the people behave like this. Uh, what, you know, it will be so repressive. It won't give people an opportunity to share ideas, and it's not going to be very healthy. Opposite to that is a consultative approach, meaning let's discuss. Everybody's welcome. Share your ideas. Share your thoughts. Let's put it all together. Let's take the best ideas and then work out a solution. So that's, you know, if a leader is like this, it's a very healthy culture. People feel they belong. They can contribute, so on. Think about, you know, a, a, another wrong. Uh, something that's very abusive, you know, uh, where uh, a, peop uh, a leader can, and, and abuse can come in many ways. And typically in an organization, it, come, it comes in uh, the way a leader speaks. If a leader speaks in a very abusive way, you know, he's very, uh, he speaks, um, you know, he uses, <laughs> hopefully, hopefully it won't happen in church, but in a church organized, Christian organization, but he uses, you know, words that are destructive, words that are putting people down. So uh, it's abusive, you know, if, he, if a leader is, calls people like that. And then this has happened in some churches, you know, um, where uh, the past, the senior pastors is very abusive towards people. He may not be using filthy language, but he's using harsh words, and that is abuse. That is very overpowering, very suppressive. Uh, people will be hurt. Uh, they may stay there for as long as they can because they may love the church, they may love the people, they may love the ministry, but in the process, they're going to get hurt. But in contrast to that, you need to have what will create a healthy culture. Leaders who are encouraging, who speak very supportive, or encouraging the people rather than abusing. If somebody makes a mistake, they don't say, you know, you useless fellow, you're good for nothing. No, they say, hey, it's okay. You know, try again. Or why don't you make this change? Or, you know, why don't you try this thing? Right? So what is that? That's a very encouraging supporter, not an abusive uh, leader or leaders. If, uh, you know, uh, if there's unhealthy competition, 
you know so sometimes leaders stack people against each other this hey look that person did like this what are you doing so it's an unhealthy competition it's, it's actually fostered by the leaders they are intentionally you know uh, putting people against each other creating a sense of unhealthy competition whereas if the leader or opposite to that is the leader fosters teamwork so then you know he says hey uh, you know so he, he always celebrates the team of course there are individuals who may be appreciated the you know the leaders and the, so on but ultimately it's the team that did it and the team did the work and we celebrate the team uh, we do, do recognize the person who carried responsibility who led the team that's sure that's true but we recognize that the lead that leader could not have done it without the help of the team so there is you know it, that 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 creates a healthy culture of team so like this you can contrast you know, and all of these things are are things that are actually have actually been noticed you know these toxic things i said i'm not talking about just uh, organizations you know you know in the corporate world these are things that are seen in the church in christian organizations people behave like this you know, they could be manipulative they could be controlling uh, they interfere in all the choices and decisions they are they could be secretive uh, sometimes uh, especially in mega churches you see the pastor being treated like a celebrity he expects to be treated like a celebrity superstar you know uh, he will stay in five star hotels the rest of the team will stay you know in some small lodge somewhere uh, there's this big disparity between the senior pastor and people because senior pastor is considered celebrity superstar he becomes a brand of the organization and these are real things that happen you know we see or uh, the, the the leader is egotistically thinks it's all happening because of him and doesn't realize that uh, there's so many people who are contributing to the success of the organization or uh, you may say you know it's entitled to it it's my right i deserve this you know uh, for whatever reason uh, a leader could be autocratic. This I'm not account accountable to anybody else. I don't answer. Nobody can ask me questions, kind of thing. Or I'm better than all uh, others. I know more than you, etc. So these are things I, I, I've not just made up, but these are things I've put down because uh, they, these are seen actually in church contexts and um, and uh, uh, Christian organization contexts. And if the leader behaves like this. And if the leader behaves like this, it's going to damage the organization. It's going to damage people who are in the organization, right? But uh, for each of these, I've put the contrasting value. You know, uh, in of superiority, we celebrate each other's strengths. And this, this has to flow from the leader. You know, the leader should be answerable. You know, when you should be, let people ask questions and, uh, you know, give honest answers. There's got to be fairness, and each one is rewarded based on performance. Now, uh, we should celebrate, you know, the team. We did it together. Uh, celebrate said, uh, success. And so these are the contrasting values. If they are, these are embodied by the leader, it's going to foster a healthy culture in the organization. Okay. Now. Uh, just before we close, similarly, uh, I'm, I'm not, uh, while uh, you know the, the main weight, like I said, is on the leaders, uh, people also, people you know, in the organization can also in, impact culture. You know, and I'm just uh, impact the culture of the organization. I'm just making a few observations, a few comments here. So, if a person or if if a person working in the organization has this attitude, you know, I'm, I just hold hold my job. They just hold on to the job, meaning they just show up, do a little work, go away. But they're not motivated beyond that. It's going to be very detrimental. Right? They're doing it just for the sake of a job. What should be the opposite and the better better value is there should be passion. Hey, I'm giving my best. Uh, this is not just a job. It's my passion. I got to get. Or I'm just doing a nine to five thing. You know, just. A contrast to it is I want to do excellent work. It's not about the nine to five, but I want my work to be really good. I want to be proud of, of the work I give. Or, 
in some attitude. Of, I just do my job. I don't care what others do. No, it's not about, not just about your job, but it's, can we, this is about us together. So I will help others to succeed as well. Yeah. So these are contrasting, even among the staff, among the people working, these are values. And if what I've put on the left side here, if we can help people, the leaders, very important, as well as the staff, you know, uh, embrace the right values, the, you know, the things that give, that, that um, uh, can foster a healthy culture. And if, if we work with this, then we will be able to have, like what I mentioned here, a very healthy organizational culture. And this will spill over into the congregation. So volunteers who are serving in the church or in the organization will imbibe the same culture. So they also will start behaving like this. They also will be you know, having this, these same attitudes. And then it'll spill over into the congregation. The congregation also begin to model it and uh, sorry follow the same example they also will become in the church uh, we'll have a healthy culture all the way through from the leadership in the organization and all the way through the volunteers and the church congregation it'll be a very healthy culture people come uh, and they say like there's something nice about this congregation there's something nice about the people here you know we we, we are they are able to see this otherwise when people come if you know for example if uh, the pastor is treated like a celebrity and uh, he's you know very authoritative and dictatorial and so on people come and they will recognize hey pastor is treated like this this is what's happening now, some people will stay because they, they don't, it doesn't matter to them. They just want to come and attend a service and go or uh, for them, yeah, pastor has to be treated like a superstar. Uh, and they may not see, they may not discern that that's a problem. And that is a problem. So they may just stay. But for people who are discerning, people who care about the church, who care about the kingdom of God, they're not going to accept these kinds of behaviors and attitudes, either from the leaders or from the people. They'll say something is wrong. You know, this is not healthy for people who understand the, the importance of culture. They will not tolerate this. You know, um, they will not accept it. And in in urban centers, in urban in cities, people do understand these things. You know, maybe, you know, in the village or rural areas, people are not so aware of these these things. They, you know, they may overlook it. But in the cities, people do recognize what is a healthy culture in an organization, in a church. Okay, this is a healthy place to be. I can, uh, I'm safe here. Or they will recognize, no, this organization, this ministry, this church, things are toxic, things are unhealthy. You know, people are being controlled, people are being manipulated. The pastor is abusive, the pastor is uh, treated like a superstar, the pastor is, you know, dominating. You know? And then they're going to withdraw. They're, most people will withdraw from such kind of a situation. So I'm going to pause here. I'm just kind of, you know, we've just uh, introduced this whole idea and, uh, and I did this contrast so that you could, uh, Get an idea of what we are actually talking about. Uh, we have about ten more minutes. Uh, we will see. Um, uh, you know, if we have any questions, any thoughts on this, uh, from an organization, from a church point of view, um, you want to discuss something, we can do that. Any questions? Any thoughts on this? Uh, Pastor Stephen, yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, Pastor, but, I mean, uh, how to overcome this, Pastor, if, if in case, you know, these cultures are not embodied 
uh, you know, into leaders or into the, uh, uh, the staffs uh, in an organization, uh, then how to, uh, you know, overcome that, uh, mm. how to deal with it. Uh, you know, when the person initially comes, you know, he comes with all these cultures, the values and all of that, but, you know, eventually uh, uh, it changes. So how to, you know, deal with that pastor? Is, mm -hmm. that's, that's a good question. In fact, the uh, next class we have to, we'll be looking at it uh, in detail, but let me just give a quick thing, you know, so first uh, is we have to keep watch. We have to keep watch over the whole culture thing. And uh, we will give a few questions in the next class on, you know, how do you check, you know, uh, what are some ways you can check if uh, people are aligned to the culture that we want to maintain, right? Because culture has to be safeguarded. Otherwise, it can be diluted. It can go off in some other, <laughs> it can go off in some other direction and it can become very negative, actually. So we have to observe, we have to guard. And then, depending on where things are, it has to be addressed. Now, it may have to be addressed at an individual level. So if it's only one person who's disturbing the culture, then you sit down and you, you know, explain things to the person. And uh, we talk, we have a conversation saying, look, you know, in this here, we, uh, you know, we, are, we work as a team. Or in this place, we, we, you know, we're focused on Jesus, not on ourselves, whatever, you know, whatever that area is, the needs, areas that need to be. So if it's, if it's an entire unit, meaning a group of people, then that has to be addressed with the group. Yeah. And uh, it has to be followed up. It has to be followed up and uh, monitor it, continue to monitor. And if it is not going to change, then the only way is to, hey, that individual, other people, uh, you know, and, and it really depends on, you know, how it's impacting the organization or impacting the church at large. And if it is significantly impacting, then we'll have to release them. You know, I said, look, if we have to work with them if they're not willing to change. And if it's still continuing to be detrimental, then we need to safeguard the, organization and uh, and uh, the the church so his, when i look back uh, you know over the last 20 years in church there are certain decisions that i made certain people who had to let go or had to ask to step down simply because of this culture you know now uh, you, you of course address that particular area of concern uh, but the real reason behind it to say the culture is being disturbed by this kind of behavior, by these kinds of actions. And that's not the culture we want to have. And therefore, you know, of course, we address it over time. If it doesn't change, that's when we have to let go. Because that culture is not aligned to what we want to see embodied. Uh, you know, we, we, we're trying to be biblical. We're trying to keep it kingdom culture. But if that's being disturbed, then has to be addressed. Yeah. Thanks, Pastor. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Now, you know, I, I just make this thing here. Now, when we make these kinds of decisions, actually, it's very painful. You know, it's very painful. I and mean, even if I look back on these 20 years and uh, I look at some of the decisions we've made, which are basically more of a, you know, protecting the culture type decisions. Uh, of course, we address the behavior. We had to talk about, hey, this is what you've done. Uh, and people know it. And then you make decisions. It's painful because, you know, they're real people. You love them. But then, and, and, and it seems like the wrong is not really big wrong. It's having to do with the culture that's being affected. And so, you know, how do you explain that? And, and, and you, know, you can't put measures on it. You know, you, you failed the exam or you didn't pay money. Or, it's not like that, right? It's very subjective, but yet it's it's there. And then when you make those decisions, it's, it's difficult. Uh, it's difficult for the people who are, who have to be let go. It's difficult to explain 
to others that this is the real reason this is the reason you know for, for people to see it and understand it is also not easy uh, because hey the people are good people are good I'm not questioning it but the behavior is impact having a negative impact and uh, it's not that they're not talented it's not that they are not skilled uh, they may be extremely talented they may be extremely skilled they may be, have a tremendous capabilities no questions on that but the, it's the behavior and the impact of the behavior on the culture that's that's being addressed and uh, that's a difficult thing and sometimes very painful but you have to do it in order to protect the organization as a whole and so some of those decisions are are very difficult and painful yeah yeah and uh, and I, as i will be mentioning next class you know sometimes or the big problem in the church today is they are afraid to make these decisions and because they don't make it the end result is thousands of people are hurt hundreds of people are hurt and i'll just give an example and this is you know the 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 the, the journey of a church uh in the united states and uh, I, it's it was a church called mars hill started in 1996 uh, and um, and uh, the reason i'm sharing it is it's right now with the you know the, the christianity today is doing a a, a huge uh, in, uh, is, is producing a, a wonderful wonderful podcast story uh, it's a 12-part series uh, it's it's going on right now it's being released and they're doing a, a complete um, storytelling on what happened to Mars Hill, uh, not from the point of pointing out the faults, but highlighting the lessons we can learn. And so, you know, you can go to christianitytoday.com and go to their podcast and, and, and listen to it. It's just amazing, but it's also very shocking. But anyway, the point of the, the story is this, the story of Mars Hill. Started in 1996 by a very small group of people. Uh, there were actually three men who joined together and started. Uh, the church began to grow. And uh, eventually the main pastor, uh, oh, God, what's his name, Pastor? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Mark Driscoll, that's his name, Mark Driscoll, yeah. So, you know, he he just was very, very abusive. So, I mean, the, 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 uh, the, the church actually was one of the fastest growing churches in America. So this is between 1996 to 2016, you know, the 20 year period. Um, uh, yeah. So they leveraged, they were the early churches who took, care, took advantage of the internet and they, they exploded. So they grew up to about 15,000 people very fast. And so, but but the problem was the lead pastor, Mark Driscoll, became very abusive, both with his staff and with the congregation. And uh, some of the, his teachings were, his part of his theology was very off, but he would not listen to anybody. And the sad part was the church was protecting him. I mean, church means the the, leaders around until some time they protected him why because he's the leader and uh, you know things are happening church is growing uh, uh, people are coming to the lord so although he was very abusive um uh, both in public and in private very just rough very rough very harsh with people nobody was taking him to task. Nobody was, I mean, there were a few people who tried, but he wasn't going to listen to anybody, you know, until uh, it reached a point where some people started saying, hey, we can't take this any longer. People are being hurt and so on. And uh, uh, eventually, you know, overnight, within a few months, the whole church collapsed. Everything gone. A church of 15,000 people, they had like 14, 15 campuses around uh, the United States, just, just exploding in growth. Within a few months, everything's gone. The whole thing collapsed, you know. And so it's a, it's a very, uh, so the things that we're talking about, 
is, is real. You know, the, 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 the leadership affects the culture. Uh, and the, what I want, I brought up that story because one of the big problems that in retrospect, you know, so the, the, they're looking back, you're evaluating what happened. One of the big problems was nobody was willing to address the problem that, hey, uh, you're creating a culture like this. By being like this, you're, you know, you're, you're affecting so many people. This needs to change. This cannot go on. It was very difficult to address it. And they kept quiet for a long time. And finally, when it began to be addressed, you know, it was very disastrous. But it was too late, actually. So the point I want to make is, you know, uh, we have to carefully guard kingdom culture. What did Jesus teach us? What does the word of God teach us? That's what we want to see in the organization. That's what we want to see in the church. Anything that is outside of it, deal with it quickly, deal with it early. Otherwise, things could be disastrous. We'll talk about it next week, okay? All right. All right, let's uh, wrap up. I hope uh, things were clear. We will uh, continue this next uh, week. Let's close in prayer, please. Anybody can just pray with us and then we will dismiss. Loving Heavenly Father, we just come into your presence of Father God. Thank you for this wonderful day. And thank you for the session of Father God. As we learned about the culture of Father God, it will help us to create and help us to nurture this uh, healthy culture in our church in our organization of father god let us carry this model everywhere we go father god let's be testimony uh, to all the people around the father god also um uh, let us have uh, compassion for people of father god jesus let us uh, let us be loving and kind uh, to other people who serve, uh, who we serve in the church and the organization of Father God Jesus. And no matter what, of oh Father God, let us always stand for good of Father God Jesus. And also, uh, we do all these uh, to honor your name and glorify your name of Father God. Let us be careful to give all the glory and honor to you, Father God. Uh, thank you. We submit this entire day into your hands, Lord Jesus. We praise you. We honor your name of Father. In Jesus' name, I pray this prayer of Father God. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. Uh, have a good uh, uh, good afternoon. See you again soon. Bye now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.